don't have a tennis background classically. You're the first kid to grow up in Arizona oh without any tennis. Oh, that really got intense. You have a growling <laughs> stomach. Someone, uh, I got to get something if we can continue. But you didn't say like, all right, we'll get, we, we, we get Emma a turkey sandwich. Jim, what a about a turkey like, sandwich? Uh, what do you want? Do you, what do you I want? I don't know. I mean, should I get something so it stops? A calzone? I feel like I've really turned this into the stomach growl with Jason Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Wall Street Journal. My name is Jason Gay, sports columnist at the Wall Street Journal. And today we're making a little audiovisual history. The debut of a new, perhaps spectacular podcast, video cast. And I, uh, I asked around for a guest and uh, a lot of people said no. But finally, somebody said yes, uh, and her name is Emma Stone, and I believe you are an actor? Some might say, and others might argue that. Uh, you're joining us because you have a film coming out this Friday, films being the you know thing you go see in a theater with lots of seats and oh. you know junior mints. Mm. Uh, the movie is called Battle of the Sexes, in which you star as the great icon of sports of social justice, of virtually everything, Billie Jean King. Emma Stone, thank you and welcome to this historic moment. Thank you so much for letting me participate in this great moment in history. Yeah, I know you did the Today Show and you were on the Kelly Ripa show before this, but this has to be the highlight of the press tour. This is pretty awesome, I yeah. gotta admit. Yeah. We don't have a name yet for this podcast. Is this your first podcast? Have you done a podcast before? I've done a podcast before, but... I um, have never named one, so <laughs> do you want me to spitball? Yeah, what if it was called Spitballing with Jason Gay? That could be. I was thinking, oh, God. The play-by-play not... play with Jason Gay. <laughs> I like, oh, God, not another effing podcast. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Right? Well, you've got to give another me. another podcast? You've everybody has me... six podcasts. Yeah, but everybody loves podcasts. They do. Do they not? I don't know. Oh, great. So is, is this it? We're, we're the podcast and no one's going to listen to because they don't love podcasts? Uh, my mom, I can assure you, my mom and my cat will both watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> my cat might even watch it twice. Are you? What are the themes of your podcast, Jason? Uh, it's about world affairs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of like um, political theory and, and sports. Wow. Mostly sports. You're covering a lot of bases. Yeah. Um, what about the big, That's a sports what about term? Jason's Big Gay Podcast? I like Jason's Big Gay Podcast. Yeah, that, that might be the winner. That sounds pretty great. What about Yo MTV Raps? I feel like that is taken. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about some of your personal history. Okay. Uh, let's go way back to ancient times, back to Arizona, where you grew up in the desert. You're in the, the, the Phoenix region, the Scottsdale region, is in, that right? In the Scottsdale region, that is where I grew up. And you had a hankering for Hollywood. You wanted to get there. Hankering for Hollywood is another great suggestion <laughs> for a podcast title. <laughs> hankering for Hollywood, yeah, that's another show I'm working on <laughs> uh, for E. Um, but in your hankering for holiday, oh, <laughs> holidays, oh, Hollywood, you famously did a presentation to your family laying out the reasons why they should release you into the wild to become an actor. And can you tell that story? Because I love it. Well, when I was um, about, I just turned 15, I believe. I might have been 14 at this point, but I m ended up moving when I was 15, which gives away the ending to this story. <laughs> I got to learn how to, yeah. how to tell an anecdote. Um, I... Yeah, I, I uh, had a a little hit in history class um, that I w would like to move to Los Angeles to be an actor in my freshman year. And um, so I went home that night and I was a computer kid. I really liked computer stuff. And so I made a PowerPoint presentation for my parents. And what was the presentation? I mean, what was the PowerPointing to? It was... Well, my ex I was citing examples of other people who had started acting, you know, in in things outside of, you know, youth theater, which is right. what I was doing there, um, young. So I had Sarah Jessica Parker okay. in the PowerPoint. Okay. And I'm trying to remember who else I had in there, but there were a couple people. Mickey Rooney? Um, I don't think he made the cut. <laughs> 
but that's shocking. Judy Garland could have been in there, I Judy guess, Garland too. Could have been Although, in there. I don't know if that would be like... So you were building a case, much in the way that someone would be, you know, preparing a presentation to sell a board of directors. You were viewing your parents as, like, the votes you needed to secure to get this. Yeah. And what was the music? Um, it was Hollywood by Madonna. Yeah. And so Everybody did they... <laughs> and so did they, they say... What did your folks say at the end of it? Did they say, we're going to we're going to take this and we're going to meet on it later and get back to you with an answer? Or did they well, agree in the room? My dad in the room was like, yes. And my mom was like, and we're going to go in another room and have a conversation <laughs> instead between the two of us. Um, so he was very all for it. Okay. Um, and she, you know, was trying to work out the logistics a little bit more of how that would actually work. Um, but now that I'm older... And I am, am, you know, have have considered in my life, oh, what would it be like to have kids? I can't fathom what it, what that conversation could have been that they agreed on this idea <laughs> that they so you think would they not just lock nuts. me in my room right, right. and say, that's enough from you. So you're saying hypothetically, were a child to come to insane. you now and say, <laughs> mom, I would like to do this and go to Hollywood and pack up and leave high school. You would be like, are you out of your mind? I... I mean, I don't, obviously, circumstantially, I don't know, because I guess it depends from kid to kid yeah. what they, you know, they saw how how in love with acting I was. And I was doing all these plays, and I had been homeschooled before, because when I was 12, I had done another presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was on poster boards. Less And successful. that was why I should be homeschooled. <laughs> no, it worked. <laughs> so I had done the, this presentation thing before. What was that presentation? To be homeschooled? To be homeschooled. So you were like, was it like so the scene in Love more, Actually? More plays. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like silent. <laughs> to you, to me, you are perfect. Please homeschool me. Um, that was so I could do, the argument was that so I could do more plays and I had a bunch of, you know, information about Arizona's educational scene. And <laughs> I don't know what Graduation my rates is. and stuff like I that. I have no idea what was wrong All with right. me. But. Well, you won them over. You go to Hollywood. Where's your first place? What part in of town? Park La Brea, okay. which is right by the Grove. If you know this, if you know Los Angeles yeah. well, it's a big mall. It's got a cheesecake factory. It's got a cheesecake factory, yeah. and it's got a really great movie theater. Yeah. And the Park La Brea houses, I want to say, like ten or thirteen thousand people. It's yeah. A huge. Huge. Um, built by the same people who did Stives in Town. If you know that, in New York. That's right. And also, uh, if you're familiar with the TV show The Hills, I think some of the young ladies... They the lived next door at the Palazzo. Oh, sorry. So, fact uh, check. Excuse me, fact Jason check. Gay, fact check. Um, fact checks with and Jason And so Gay. you moved to Hollywood, and then immediately you got starring roles in movies, and then you became famous. Yep, that's exactly how I tell the story, too. <laughs> that's, um, you just first, took words right on my <laughs> First paying part, first job you actually landed, what was it? Um... Well, I, I um, did a reality search competition for the new Partridge family. For the, It was not the actual new Partridge family. It was the search. The search for the new Partridge family, which was a reality competition style show. So they searched and they... They searched and they searched and they... They I passed guess, over. <laughs> I guess this is what they landed on <laughs> in the end. Uh, so I, I got the part of Lori Partridge. Okay. And um, we filmed one pilot episode that aired at a, a strange time many months later. Yeah. It was not picked up to series. If you're wondering if it was, it, it was not. Okay. But it was a pretty great opportunity because I met a, a great man called Billy Man, and he introduced me to a lawyer who introduced me to Doug Wald, who's my manager to this day. So it was pretty magical. And one of my best friends in the world, I met on that show who's named Dave Petruzzi and he's one of my closest, closest friends. So I, and a you, lot of good things happened. Yeah. And you're living at home with mom? Yeah, in Park La Brea. And how'd that go? Bunk beds? Not bunk beds. No, we had, there were two bedrooms in the apartment. Sorry, my stomach's growling. I wonder if you can hear that on the podcast. Hopefully. I hope so too. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I'm a little hungry. <laughs> it's morning and it's time for breakfast. <laughs> um... Time for breakfast with Jason. Time I'm going to do breakfast. this the entire time. Yeah. yeah, I can't get up that early. I've got so many podcast suggestion <laughs> titles. Um, title suggestions. <laughs> Just invert those. Um, so, yeah, I. Uh, it was it was fine. It was nice living with my mom because I'd only ever known living with my mom. 
Okay, but because I, mean, I was a, I was a child. Was she cramping your style a little bit? I mean, you know my mom. <laughs> what a style cramper, Krista Stone, the style cramper. That's what All we right. call her. Tell me about Three Dog Bakery. The job. This was a oh, day yes. job that you had. This was a day job when that you were I auditioning. Had. Yes, I was. Um, I was a, a a baker and salesperson at Three Dog Bakery for about I want to say six months, but it could have been shorter and just felt like it was six months in my mind. This was a bakery for dogs. This so was you, a bakery for still dogs. around, still still there at the yeah. farmers market. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You there were there were cakes for dogs. There were treats for dogs. Everything is edible. For dogs, uh, but people, there are people who bought them for for their children. Yeah, yeah. The Oreos that we make for dogs <laughs> were made from carob instead of chocolate, and yeah. like a honey sweetened frosting, and they were all you know human grade, but healthier. And so there was a mom that would come in pretty frequently and buy these dog Oreos for her children, because they you know they're fine for humans. How did you know that they were for the kids? Because she didn't she try said, to play it off for the dog? She say, no, she was like, these are for my kids. They're healthier than Oreos, and it's a better decision. <laughs> it's carob. It's not chocolate. This is good. Okay. <laughs> a couple years in to all this, you get super bad. Mm-hmm. Super was bad. That, is that a comment, a comment on my personality, or is that? are you talking about the, the movie? Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about you the get film. super bad. Which just celebrated its 10-year anniversary. Does that make you feel old? Yeah, I feel so old. <laughs> Has anyone ever lived to this age before? Did I just set a Guinness World Record? Ah, uh, yeah, no, yeah, you are <laughs> quite old. Um, but tell me about that. I mean, because that was uh, was it flukish getting the part? Did you audition? Was it you know? Did you know somebody? Oh, yeah, no, I auditioned, but I but I had auditioned for the casting director of Superbad, Allison Jones, yeah. many times throughout well, kind of three years that I was auditioning, and she called me in. Um, because she thought of me, and so that's how that worked out. I I went on tape, and then I ended up doing a, a table read for the movie, and then auditioning again with Jonah. It, t- it was like a six month process, but yeah, it was it was pretty um, phenomenal of her. Did you know it was going to be this thing? It was so funny when I read it. I couldn't stop laughing, and I was so into it. I I felt like it was going to be pretty. funny. I just read this this anniversary piece. I think on the Ringer about. Bill Hader tells a story about he went with you and your mom. Yeah, to, to the, the first weekend. Yeah, to the well, no, there was a friends and family screening. Okay. Yeah. And that people were just going bananas. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. There's so many sounds. There, there, there are like, I just heard a growl. Can you hear? But <laughs> I, what I love about these stories, these these the, the the origin story of Emma Stone, is that it very closely resembles what we later see years on in La La Land. You know that sort of, you know, here's to the dreamers. I mean, I, mean pointing, I, remember, I don't know if you guys I can see, but he, he was just pointing uh, out here. But, you know, <laughs> what happens in that film, you know. Stays in that film. <laughs> <laughs> stays in that film. Um, let's fast forward to that. We're going to jump okay. over your entire career into La La Land. Awesome. <laughs> um, did you know that was going to be a big thing? I mean, that was a pretty big gamble. That was, yeah, I don't know that that was like, oh, this is a guaranteed you know, blockbuster. But that's not with anything. I've never felt that way really about anything. That anything yeah. is uh, guaranteed to to do well. Um, but La La Land, Damien was so. I mean, he could map out the entire movie for you when you spoke to him. He could tell you what every shot was going to look like. Yeah. Um, he had been thinking about it for so long that it was it was kind of like, all right, give yourself over to the process and see what happens. Um. And how much rehearsing did you do for that? Three months. Three months. Three months of singing and dancing. And it was almost all with Ryan, or was it some on your Did own? Did an American someone... Express ad just pop up on your phone? <laughs> Did <laughs> no, I'm just looking Venmo to see you? how much time we have. Oh, okay, no, got but it. someone did Venmo me. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Forty nine bucks. <laughs> Forty nine bucks. What did um, you get for them? <laughs> I can't say. Oh, um, well, I can't did say you, with Jason. Did you read Gay. my story that's about? A good did you one? read my story about taking a uh, uh, marijuana gummies at the Floyd Mayweather McGregor fight? No. True story. Why didn't the, you send that over? I'll send it to you. Okay. The journal is is. Paying, I didn't realize you did marijuana. <laughs> I, I didn't occasion. realize you dabbled on in the marijuana. And also, it's not technically marijuana. It's it's THC infused edibles, so it's not actually marijuana. That's weed. <laughs> I got some hate mail. Um, Why? Because people hate weed. People thought that I was endorsing drugs, and I said, "You're damn right." <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're damn skippy. All right, so you won the big fat Oscar. Uh, it, what did that mean? I mean, well, that very was like, fat. It's very I'm glad surreal. someone finally yeah. called it out. Was it amazing? I mean, was it like, does it still feel weird to you to know this now? Or are you kind of like, yeah, I want it, damn it. Yeah, you know me. I'm like, yeah, I want it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn it. I just say damn it after everything. But did you feel, I mean, everyone, a, a lot of people thought you would win, but there have been, you know, histories of you know actors winning this 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 sure. this and then it comes to the big show and then yeah. it doesn't work out so you can't like no. guarantee anything no it's the it's the strangest feeling um it's the strangest feeling leading up to something like that it's just i don't know that i've ever felt so so weird i yeah. felt so like the night before you're like i'm excited but i'm also not it's just it's like a it's such a funny funny yeah. feeling and then and then that happened and it just still feels like you know just surreal and kind of like that happened to somebody else you'd been nominated before for a supporting role oh uh, my god <laughs> that one must have been you could hear it I think all right I, you know I, what I, I, you know. can we can we uh, get some saltines in here <laughs> hey fetch some saltines um uh, wow Wow, I'm hungry. But you'd been nominated before for now. I'm gonna forget the name of the. It's the the play. I'll, uh, um, in Birdle Toronto. Ma- Birdle Man. Birdle. Birdle Man. Bird, Birdman. Um, but you. I remember you saying that. Uh, you didn't have any assumptions about anything, and you could just kind of have a drink and a good night, and it was fine. It wasn't yeah. like a lot of pressure. This right. was a different vibe altogether. I bet. Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a different process. It, would, it had been six months, kind of, of promoting La La Land because we started at the end of August yeah. and this was at the end of February. So it, yeah. we had just been together for so long, the whole crew, and it was. It, my stomach's about to growl again. I can feel it. Oh my god, I got to move around. <laughs> this can't happen again. This is getting insane. Um, oh, there it is. I heard it. God, I'm really well, sorry, everyone at home. That's yeah, okay. I had half of a carrot muffin. Half of a carrot muffin. That'll that do was it. That'll hours do it. ago. That'll do it every time. That was um, hours ago. Um. So, uh, I, yeah, it was just, it was just kind of a, a, this, this long road of all being together and traveling together. And then, yeah. And then that, that crazy night, it was a crazy night. It was a crazy night. The end, the wackiness with the envelope Mm -hmm. with Moonlight and La La Land. What was going through your mind in that moment? Well, there wasn't, you you just sort of was happening. So there wasn't much going through. (laughs) Right, you weren't. Like, I don't think anyone's oh, minds except for like, what is going on? Of course, this is what's happening. Right, yeah, right. no, it was just, it was just. Um, I didn't hear that one. You didn't. <laughs> that was a deep rumble, <laughs> guys. This whole podcast has become about my stomach growls. I'm sorry. Well, I'm really pulling focus. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, the, one of the funny things about that whole ending was that you talked about how you've been promoting the film since August. A lot of the time you had been on this festival circuit with people from Moonlight. You kind of knew yeah, each other. There that, was some camaraderie between the two films. Yeah, and it was like the greatest group of people. So I think this that was, you know, exciting for everybody. It was just the way that it happened was, you know, obviously yeah. pretty historically bizarre. Yeah. yeah. No one's ever going to forget it. Well, you know, I guess... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is your Oscar now? My mom has it. Your mom, like with her right now? Yeah, she just carries it everywhere. All right, I'd do that. No, I'm uh, just kidding. This isn't around. You made Battle of Sexes out Friday, uh, right after La La Land. A lot, in fact, a lot of the people from La La Land yeah. were a part of the crew mm-hmm. for Battle. Yeah, Lena Sangram, the cinematographer for La La Land, did the cinematography for Battle, and Mary Zofri is the costume designer. Was the same on both and. I think it was to the point where John and Val are directors because obviously La La Land had not come out at this point. We shot it March through May of 2016. Right. But we were all talking about it and had seen early screenings. And they were just like, can all the La La Land people just Shut. stop for a second? Because we know you're excited about La La Land, but just that's enough. Everyone's wearing their La La Land hats and their jackets. Were you singing? Let's all take a deep breath. Yeah. Um, no, I wasn't singing. Okay. I, I I was in tennis mode by that point. John and Valerie were probably like, what if La Land stinks? I, you know, it, it's, it's understandable. <laughs> like, what? They're all so excited. <laughs> um, but you had to get ripped. You got ripped for this. You Billy think? Billie Jean King was, uh, this is something she's commented to me and other people about. She was just impressed by how much you threw yourself into the physicality of the part. I mean, there's obviously, there are lots of components to this film. There's sort of 
Billie Jean's personal life, the struggle, of course, for equality with the Women's Tennis Association and everything that's happening in that era. But there's a physical part to this, playing tennis. You don't have a tennis background, classically. You're the first kid to grow up in Arizona without any tennis. Oh, that really got intense. You have a growling (laughs) stomach. Someone, I got to get something if we can continue. But you didn't say like... All right, we'll get we we, we get Emma a turkey sandwich, Jim. What a about turkey like a turkey sandwich? What do you want? Do you, what do you I want? I don't know. I a, mean, should I get something so it stops? A calzone. I feel like I've really turned this into the stomach growl with Jason Gay. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great for our ratings. Though, okay, all right, all right great, you know, great. Um, you're going to get a six four rating. <laughs> I don't even. What does that mean? You know, like in network. Oh right, network. I'm just br- bringing it back to you. Nice, nice. Um, okay. Tennis training. You uh-huh. worked with a former pro yes. named Who Vince you know. Spadia. Mm-hmm. Spadia. 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 But I like Spadia. <laughs> what was I thinking? He beat Federer. Yeah. He beat Nadal. I know. He beat Sampras. He beat Agassi. He was your trainer. Um, cool guy. Yeah. Uh, interesting approach. Uh, taught you how to volley by saying, serve the pizza. Serve the pizza. And how long was that? Was that weeks or months? or? That was a couple months. That was a couple months. And um, it was, yeah, a lot of, he was great because he really understood early on that this was not, I mean, it wasn't like I was going to get to BJK or even close level learning from scratch and on the racket that I was learning on. Um, but he really helped me. Racket. I mean, yeah, it's like yeah. 70s style of tennis right. yeah. and the grip is different. And, yeah. um, so he was really incredibly helpful and it ended up becoming kind of like choreography like trying to mimic her serve mimic her backhand yeah um and then i had an amazing double named caitlin christian yeah. who's a pro as well and so it was a, a real team effort that i'm very grateful for caitlin's in the quarterfinals of a women's tournament this week right now still playing she's pretty in the itf pretty fantastic um billy jean you know we both know is this force in nature yeah and you know a hugely important person in sports history but social history in general but also like a living breathing still active still totally at it human being and is that intimidating to have to take on not just a role where there's you know a history that is public but also an actual person who's out and about absolutely i mean that was it was my first time ever playing a real person and then that person is billy jean king who is eventually going to sit down and watch the movie and she was so generous with her story this part of her life that was not necessarily really deeply explored maybe publicly before Um, so yeah it was a lot of pressure that was the most pressure I felt I mean beyond you know adding muscle or learning tennis or finding or doing research which was all challenging but really a fun part of the process yeah that part was was the most daunting what? And she was so warm and open and so Billie Jean about all of it. She was like, yeah. anything you need, you know, I'll, I'll do anything you need. If you, <laughs> if you want me to talk to you, I'll talk to you. If you don't want me to, it's fine. It's, you know, she's just like a force of sheer energy. But I thought, you know, in seeing the film, one thing that struck me watching, I was like, wow, she was sort of shy back then. Like, yeah. I always think of her just sort of like barging through doors, which is how she is now. She's so full of life. But she said, no, it's very accurate. I mean, she was not somebody who was comfortable in the spotlight she did not like feel comfortable in front of a microphone at that point of her life right yeah I mean she was she wasn't a, able to be fully who she was right. and I think you know people getting to be all of themselves and not have to hide anything is you know huge which is why I think she is such an activist to this day she's all about equality and getting to bring your full self to any circumstance your work your your life the way you express yourself so yeah. i think now of course she is so fully formed and able to kind of be free within who she is um but she was very shy and she was very soft spoken watching interviews yeah. that struck me watching interviews from the 70s she just when i when i talked to her i said i'm working with a dialect coach um to work on your voice and she was like why do you need to do that you sound exactly like me i mean this is how we talk <laughs> and i was like yeah but when you back then she kind of she was up here and she was very soft spoken and she got it across in a different manner um and she was like well i had to there was that was my only yeah. option you know that's interesting that people like you know we hopefully evolve as people and we become different people as we get older and that you're playing someone who's in a period of time and the actual fully formed person of who she is now is yeah. a different kind of person and so you probably have to like you can't rely on what the current version of her is well I can and I know that her her 
perspective now is so kind of full, but that is the thing is like I'm now, you know, I'll be 29 in a couple of weeks. So I'm the same age as she was when she played this match and when she was going through all of this. And I don't, I haven't figured it all out. Like there's so much I still don't understand and I'm confused about. And I'm sure, you know, in 40 years I'll be able to say, well, during that time I didn't see it, but this, uh, this was weighing on me and I hadn't figured this out yet. And, um, that thankfully that place that I'm in now matched up well with telling the story of of her in that time period, because I I can relate to that so much. And it's hard for me to have that kind of circumspect right now sure. as it is for anyone in the current period of their lives it's funny talking to Billie Jean also about how she's feeling right now with the movie coming out I don't know if you talked to her about this but how she's feeling right now about the movie coming out and what she feels she's kind of like I don't know yet I don't yeah. know what I feel I, I'm i in the middle of it so I'm and I was like oh good see that's what was happening then too <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I mean I love the fact that like just people who are younger who might know Billie Jean vaguely from you know references and you know pop culture or Geico commercials and things like that, that she, um, you know, becomes this like vibrant person who is seismic in like U.S. sports history. And yeah. and, and the, for her to become, to be rendered that way for a new audience, I think is really cool. Yeah. I, one thing that struck me about the film too is that though we're talking about a match that, you know, it happened yesterday? Yesterday, four, yesterday 40, 40, 40, years 40 ago. years ago. Yeah. It feels startlingly, maybe a little depressingly current. Yeah. I mean, the issues which are present in this film about equality, about the gender wage gap, about just, you know, that struggle are Mm -hmm. as, you know, material and evident as they were back then. And did that, you know, did that become obvious in filmmaking or watching it now, you sort of say like, wow, this really does strike a chord still? It, It definitely felt, you know, dishearteningly relevant in in many parts while we were filming it but I mean even more so now I think that the you know the place we find ourselves in right now there's a lot of you know similar rhetoric that we've heard um, recently and there's you know the weight obviously the wage gap was happening while we were filming a year and a half ago but it wasn't I don't know the kind of climate right now is um, disappointingly yeah, relevant in some ways, and obviously we've th- they've made a lot of strides. Women can get a credit card without a man co-signing for them now, and <laughs> um, you know th- there's there's obviously differences. And and the winner of the U.S. Open the other day, Sloane Stevens yeah. the w- of the women's final, got three point seven million dollars. I mean, Billie Jean left the U.S. Lawn Tennis Association because they weren't paying the women enough and signed the WTA contract for a dollar. So yeah. this is obviously different. Um, and there are different opportunities within the sport, but uh, yeah, I think the conversation still stands. There's still we still have a long way to go. Well, and there's still you know tennis is the exclusion. You know tennis. I mean, there's the exception. They are the sport where there is actual pay equality. There yeah. isn't across other sports. But I think that has to be an enormous, enormous testament to Billie Jean. Hundred percent. I mean, she's hundred percent. And I and it, it's fascinating. I mean, you know this much better than I do, but like. When people are fighting these battles, not just in other sports, but in any kind of workplace, they turn to her. I mean, well, it was it was f- pretty overwhelming the other day because being with Billie Jean, you know, having been lucky enough to play her in a movie means that I get to go along with her to some of these things when we're talking about the movie. And the other day, she had a, a luncheon for her leadership initiative, yeah. and Christiane Amanpour accepted an award from from the Billie Jean Leadership Initiative, and she said. Uh, we are here because of Billie Jean. Yeah. And to hear her say that and to be sitting right. next to Billie Jean, it was just like, it was just incredible. It was, it was, you know, so, so amazing to hear the, the difference that she's made in so many people's lives and these, in so many iconic women's lives there, they thank Billie Jean for all that she did. I mean, in 1973 and 72 and 70, Women weren't speaking out in the way that she was speaking out. The bravery that that took yeah. as number one in the world was immense. Yeah. And we stand on her shoulders in, in so many conversations about equality and LGBTQ rights. And it's, you know, it's just huge. Yeah, she won't stop. I mean, she's just going to go can't. for it. Yeah. She is, as she always says, she's a fire in her belly. And yeah. she always has. And you can feel it when she walks into the room. And you're left with it when she leaves the room. I mean, she's so inspirational that it's it's really hard not to feel like... All right, 
I got to do my part. This is why she's fought so hard all these years. I mean, you should have seen her face when Sloane Stevens yeah. accepted that check. Yeah. Sloane Stevens' like, face was pretty great too. She was like she, the I know <laughs> she was so kind of like blown away, but it was it was also you know Billie Jean was like this is what the original nine were fighting for. This yeah. is the, you know for this generation and beyond to have these opportunities to make a living playing their sport, yeah. thing that they love, to be able to support their families. Like this is this is what we hoped for. Are you a tennis fan now? I mean, are you going to be, are you like, I can't talk about tennis anymore after this movie. I'm done. I don't, I, it was such a boot camp experience that I did take a bit of a break. But then it was <laughs> funny because a couple of months later I was sitting in a, in a room and, and tennis was on and I, w- you couldn't tear me away. I was like, oh my God, I was watching everything. Um, so I, I've gotten, I've eased back into my, to my tennis All right. feelings. Have you seen the Borg McEnroe one? No, not yet. Have you? No. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. I've heard it's really great. Uh, you saw Mother. I saw Mother. Crazy. You saw Mother. We can talk about it now, but maybe we I shouldn't. Mean, we, we can't spoil it. We can't but, give anything away. I mean, you'd probably been prepped that it was crazy. Did it? Did you think it was as crazy as, you know, did it live up to your expectations my of insanity? Jaw, my jaw was on the floor. Yeah. I saw a couple of headlines that say it's the most WTF movie of the year. <laughs> and the first thing, am I allowed to curse on your podcast? Sure, of course. Okay, the first thing I said right as the credits started to roll was, what the f- <laughs> fuck? I was just like, this is the, it's probably the most insane thing I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. No, you, you can't curse on my podcast. Just <sighs> um, it is a crazy film. It is a it crazy is film. Crazy. Now, there are pictures in the newspaper of you farting around New York City with Jonah making some TV show. What's the deal? Were we farting in the pictures? Well, no, you're just, but you know, you're dressed in like well, some sort of like, like, you're like not yeah, I don't totally know for sure. sure. Fact check. Fact check, um, please. What is this thing? Um, this is a Netflix show. Okay. It's called Maniac. Okay. It's directed by Carrie Fukunaga, who did the first season of True Detective oh, yeah. and Beast of No Nation and yeah. Sinombre. Lots of great stuff. And is it's it like um, a limited run thing. It's ten episodes. Okay. Of fun and wildness. Is it like action, thriller, comedy, all of the above? All of the above. Okay. All of the above. We we try to you know. All, cover all genres. And when's that coming out? I think next fall, okay. 2018. What are you binge watching right now? Um, I haven't really been binge watching lately because the past month has been pretty insane. Yeah. I started reading the book of The Handmaid's Tale and I've heard that that's the greatest show and I haven't seen it yet. Reading? God, that's so boring. I'm sorry. I, um, I'm sorry. I haven't I, seen Handmaid's Tale. I'm really Tale. excited to see that show. Yeah. I think Elizabeth Moss is the bomb. I also think Jennifer Lawrence is the bomb and that's why Mother totally rocks in many ways but there's also michelle pfeiffer who i was super Mm. super into it's i mean the first time i saw it i thought this is the movie that people would be yelling at each other at a dinner party for like there's so many things to dissect after you see it that come back to you the themes and the the thoughts and ideas in it it's just it's incredible and i can't believe she saw it with her whole family like that oh is cuckoo it's the, and they hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Well, see Mother, but very much see Battle of the Sexes. Out Friday, an incredible rendering of the life of Billie Jean King in a very important moment in American sports and cultural and social history starring Emily Jean Stone. That's me. We both have Jean as a middle name. It's yeah. so super cool. So super cool. Thank you Thank so you much for, for listening being... to Stomach Growls with Jason Gay. <laughs> uh so we do this every Thursday at around 10 a.m. So we'll expect you back here, you know. Please come back. Yeah, please come back to the show. Oh, are we talking to the listeners or are you talking to me? No, we want you to come I'm back. I'm back yeah. every Thursday at 10 a.m. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Okay, great. All right, great. I'll see you guys next Thursday. Emma Stone. I'm Jason Gay. Thank you for listening, watching, hate watching, Wall Street Journal, <laughs> audio, video, whatever this is. <laughs>